the 2024 Euros has reached the semi-final stage. In this video, we analyse every game and predict how each team will fare in these final four. This is our Euro 2024 semi-finals preview. All right, let's get into it then. European Championship semi-finals. Firstly, how on earth are England here? I don't know, but I'm no absolutely idea. buzzing. But we'll start with the other game. The game on Tuesday night, tomorrow evening, Spain versus France. Let's start with Spain. Best team in the tournament so far. Have they got what it takes to beat France, though? Are France just too good? I mean, yeah, I'll, to be honest, you know, Spain, I've been very, very impressed. I, I think they've been superb. The game, the, the group stage was unflappable. The, the round of season against Georgia, yeah, it was quite easy, but still they looked brilliant in that game, you know, especially the young players. Williams had a barnstormer. And then that core final against Germany could have gone either way. But what Spain proved in that Germany game is they have that grit. They have what it takes. They had the quality. We already knew that. But they've also got that ability in a tournament. They've got that experience to get those games across the line. And, you know, yes. And, and, when, and when you've got to think about it, Germany levelled late on before yeah, to send it to extra time. If you think about that, Spain were three minutes away from knocking them out in 90 minutes, which would have been a brilliant, yeah. brilliant achievement as it was. But Spain, they dug deep and they got through and they proved that they've got that metal. You know, they are a very, very tough side to beat. So even if France do turn up and bring their A game, uh, you know, Spain, with their quality and experience, I, I think they've got a good shot. You can never look at it the other way, though, and say that Germany were unlucky not to score more in that game. There was the penalty shout where Marc Cucurre made a fantastic save. And if that goes the other way, it, may be, it maybe looks slightly different. So... I think you can definitely look at it both ways. The one thing I will say for certain, though, is France have not been very good at this tournament. I think when you oh, watch yeah. the way they've played, they have been not bad, but boring. And, well, to be fair, the Portugal game was actually just bad. They, they yeah, couldn't they score. The, the first thing that gives me positives, though, for France is a lot of their system is built around counter-attacking. If you notice what they're doing, it's very deep, and they wait for teams to come onto them. Now, what they've been met with so far is that nobody wants to come onto them. Austria did, and they were punished for it. They lost yeah. that game 1 0, but a lot of that's because Austria are very unlucky with their finishing. So are France, though, to be fair. Then it was the Netherlands game. Again, another side that just didn't, they didn't really there. push onto them. They just sort of waited. And same with Poland. You get into the knockouts, and they played Belgium, who did nothing, really. <laughs> and then they played Portugal, who did nothing. And yeah. the thing, though, that gives me confidence here is that Spain are going to come forwards. Spain are going to attack France. And the question is if France's tactic actually works. Could they just counter and get players like Mbappe yeah. in behind, running in behind, and suddenly Spain are really open? There's pros and cons for France. I think the massive positive is that they can, as you say, they can absorb high pressure superbly. And you know, even if yeah. Spain do have quality chances, I think Mike Maynan is an elite goalkeeper, if not world class. William Saliba, world class centre half. France are so strong defensively. Best defence the tournament. Exactly, that Spain <laughs> can batter them with opportunities, and I would I wouldn't be surprised if France managed to you know swap them all away and keep them out. And then, as you say, they can hit on the counter. And yes, that is dangerous. And yes, they've got some phenomenal players. But it is simple. You know, the fact is they have not scored from open play at this tournament. Two own goals, a penalty, and they beat Portugal in a penalty shootout. It's it's not good enough. And the, even if even if they can play well in Spain. Are they going to take those chances? And Mbappe has looked unsettled all tournament. Yeah. I think Turan, Kolomani haven't been great. Griezmann's not been great. Usman Dembele has been one of their best attackers, but he starts on the. He's been. Yeah, he's been benched too often. So I think for France, the game will come down to how good France are in attacking areas. If they're as woeful as they have been at the whole tournament so far, Spain will walk all over them. If they, if if France up their game and they take their chances and they create chances, then I think France could be could give it a good shot as well. Yeah, to play devil's advocate though, France have conceded just one goal at this entire tournament, which is very impressive. Yeah. Which is just yeah. that goal to Poland, which is, again, how on earth did that happen? But that's the only goal they've conceded so far this tournament. And for me, I think Spain are so good as a team, as a unit. They play really nice football. But do they have those world-class individuals that can take the game by the scruff of the neck and change it like Kylian Mbappe can? Because for me, Lamine Yamal, incredibly talented footballer, he was so good in that Germany game. But if France play perfectly defensively, has he got the ability to come up with something magical in that moment? I'm not sure if that, if Spain have those tools. Yeah. I'm not sure Nico Williams is that cool. is that player yet. He's magical. He's brilliant. He's got great one-on-one -on -one ability. But Jules Kunde is a very, very good defender. Mm. Very, very good one-on-one -on -one defender. And the thing that Spain have been able to do so far is either deceive people with their movement because they're very talented or outpace players. Now, you're not outpacing Teo Hernandez and Jules Kunde very easily and William <laughs> Saliba. That's not happening. 
And so will that deception be enough? And can they deceive France? Because France mm. are so good defensively. That's a big question mark for me. Do Spain have the players, those difference makers that we talk about so often, to, to change the game? Because France do. France know they do. Kylian Mbappe, you've only got to look at the World Cup final to know the impact that man can have on a game just by himself. And the question mark for me is, do Spain have those sort of players? Because I'm not. I don't think Morata, for example, provides that sort of thing. Maybe Fabian yeah. Kang has been great at this tournament. Well, that's the thing. I, I think it's a chance to step up. It's a chance for Spain players of to course. step up, as you say. I think Williams, Yamal, you know, Danny Olmo, they've, they've been brilliant at this tournament. But they, they're going to need to up that level if they want to, you know, take this game by storm. But it is the chance. You know, it was similar to Mbappe in 2018 World Cup. He turned up at it and he took it by storm. And we went, wow. He is just, I mean, if we didn't know it already, he has just proved he is going to be one of the best players in the world. You know, yeah. and that is the chance for Spain. Because if Lamine Yamal gets onto that pitch, picks up the ball and scores two goals, we're going to sit there and go, that boy will be one of the best in the world. Yeah. Same with Nico Williams. Brilliant tournament. And if he can pick up the ball and he can turn up, if he can up his level to prove that he's a game changer, prove how good he is, then we'll sit there and go, wow. But as you say, it's a question of will they do that? Yeah, exactly what I'm saying. They definitely can. They're brilliant, fantastic footballers. Will they step up in that moment? I'm not so sure they will. Uh, if it comes down tactically, for me, Didier Deschamps is not great tactically. I think he's, he's good enough for international football. But if it does come down to those minute details, the things I've seen Louis de la Fuente's side do this tournament give me great confidence that he knows mm. what he's doing. He's very good. But I do wonder about how how adaptable he is. Can they change up yeah. if they concede? Can he adapt to the situation? Because we've not seen that yet. But the, all the principles we've seen so far suggest he's a very, very good man. Yeah, the other thing is well for Spain, is I don't know if you can find a list of it, but obviously there's quite a few suspensions. No, Carvajal, right. obviously, not only did he pick up another yellow card, which I've seen in band, he then decided to... Um, throw who was he, a Musiala to the floor so he was sent off do you think, I think a lot of the rotation options Lenormand and Carvajal obviously starters Pedro out injured other than that they will be able to play I think a fairly full strength yeah. starting 11 we expect uh, Uno Simon who's been fantastic this tournament Laporte Kukurea one of the top players of the tournament be there Rodri's obviously already served a suspension you've got yeah. Fabian we expect it with Danny Olmo in there who's been really really good this tournament yeah. then a front three of course of Yamal, Morata and Williams is Morata question right the question for me, I think he is fine. Okay, yeah. Yeah. He's only got one yellow card. Right. The question for me is around Jesus Navas coming into the side of right back. Is because obviously we expect Mbappe will line up on that left hand side. Oh. Is that asking for trouble? Hundred percent. I mean, I think I think Carvajal would struggle, but Carvajal. I mean, kind of experience. I mean, Carvajal, Carvajal what, will foul him. Yeah, okay, exactly. So. But he'd be smart about it. He wouldn't let. Well, I would say he's smart about it. Look, we did in the last <laughs> he might, round. He might take him in a chokehold, throw him on the ground. <laughs> yeah, you never know. <laughs> so it definitely could go a matter of ways. For me, I wouldn't be surprised if we did see Nacho Fernandez out there, just yeah. for that experience and yeah. slightly less old. Um, and then we see Daniel Vivian come in at centre half. Spain are very light in defence now because of those those suspensions. The positive thing, though, is they, if they do get through, Carval can't be sent off for the final. Yeah, so exactly. So at least you can look at it that way. Yeah, you've still, yeah and well. the Norman will be back as well. Although well, will yeah. Carval be back? Is it, not, is it one game or two games? I, I don't think know, for what he did, it I, should be a year. I don't know how they rule on being suspended for too many yellow cards <laughs> and, and getting a red card. <laughs> but, you know, I, 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 I'm sure we'll let you I wait for that. because it was two yellows and not a straight it red at the one, end, it should be a one-game suspension. But again, I'm, I'm not. Don't quote me on yeah. that one. But yeah, either way, it's going to be a very tight game. Harry, if you had to give a, a loose prediction, a call, we don't want to hear your full prediction. We'll hear that on stream on Tuesday. But a loose prediction, what would you say? Yeah, I've got to go with the facts. I've got to go with the form. I'm going to go, I'll go Spain. I think, I think Spain will just have enough. It'll be a close game. But when you look at the performance of the tournament, I mean, I just, I, I can see where France can score. I just don't know if they will score. Uh, and simple as that, I don't think you can get through to a Euros final scoring no goals from open play and only scoring three goals, two of them being an own goal and one of them being a penalty. I don't think you can get through doing that, especially when you play a Spain side that have been so, so good. I'm going to go. I'm going to back Spain. Yeah, everything points towards Spain and that's exactly when France turn up at this tournament. I think this is the game that's suited most to how they want to play and if everything that Deschamps have been to make forcing us to watch yeah. for the last few weeks comes to fruition, this is the game where they're going to look best. So, Hopefully France show up. For me, they're inevitable. There is an inevitability yeah. about France that just isn't there with Spain. They've got those difference makers. I think Spain's the sensible prediction, but I'm going to back Fair France. Enough. I think France will will just about do it. And maybe they won't score. 
Maybe they'll score a goal this whole tournament and still win it because they yeah. could take it to penalties. They could win there. They could get an own goal or, some, or a penalty in the game. For me, it's going to come down to something like that. But I think France will win somehow. Fair enough. That's Fair what enough. they do, isn't it? Yeah. That's what they do. Uh, let's go on to the other one then, which is probably going to take us about an hour to talk about. Netherlands versus England. Let's start first with Netherlands and then we can rant Good. about Gareth Southgate. It's not been perfect for Netherlands, but they're into the semi-finals. Can they now go all the way? Yeah, it's an interesting one from Netherlands. I think their knockouts have been much better than the groups. Um, Even so, Romania were pretty poor and they struggled against Turkey at the end. <sighs> yeah, but I think it's the reaction from... Um, and I don't blame it on Netherlands, I blame it on Komen, but I think... I blame everything on Komen. Yeah, the Romania game was solid. Three goals, you know, very convincing game. They played really well. Uh, and Turkey, also they won that game. But if, if, again, though, you have to, if you split it down into the halves... First half against Romania, first half against Turkey. T- um, Netherlands weren't very good in those half. Stephen Bervain then came off a half time in both games, and Netherlands scored loads of goals. Well, that was going to be my point. My problem for for Netherlands is that Komen keeps playing his favourites. For yeah. me, they look more solid with the pie off with Bervain off. For me, De Ligt should be in there over De Vry. I don't really understand mm. that one. I think that's another one where Komen is just favouring his... And this is where the difference comes between Netherlands and, say, England, is that Komen's realised his problem at half-time in both games, and they've got it right. You know, he brought in... It was Marlon who came in against Romania. He, he, did he get a goal and assist? Two goals? Something like that? Yeah. And then Vegors came in against Turkey and was absolutely brilliant because you put a big brute up there to battle with the centre-halves. He held the ball up, he played nice football and he helped the Netherlands get back in the game. So that's the thing, Komen has got it right at half-time. So the big thing will be is, can he get it right from the off? If he does, I mean, they should they, they should be have a very nice time of it. If he doesn't, is there time for England to pounce in that first half before Komen realises he got it wrong again? Well, that's the thing, isn't it? If we're talking about the two managers, there is absolutely nobody on this earth who believes that Gareth Southgate is a better manager than Ronald Komen. No. There's nothing to point towards that. Komen's a fantastic manager. He is definitely stubborn in his ways, and that is perhaps hindering oh. him as, he's, as he ages now, because... His, I still think a little bit of his football is a bit regressive and I think a, the problem with this national side is he's clearly got favourites like Southgate has Yeah, and that is an issue. The difference is, we, obviously we sit at Southgate in the 75th minute go, where are the subs? Whereas Komen, yeah. you know, he made a change at half-time in Turkey, change against half-time in Romania and he bought poor Joey Veerman off after 22 minutes or something like that. So he's so showing that he's not nothing. afraid to admit that he got it wrong. He's not afraid to bring players off when he knows it's not working. Yeah, 35 minutes, he was exact- tragic. Though. I mean, he was absolutely terrible. But, yeah, that still... Komen changed it, and, and, and it worked. If he kept him out there, it would have been bloody murder. But yeah. he didn't, and he made that change. That could be the difference. Two sides that have had mediocre tournament. Don't get me wrong, Netherlands had a far better tournament than England. But when it comes down to it, Komen is happy to change and admit he's wrong. Southgate doesn't, doesn't change it, even when it isn't going well. Let's talk about England then. I think for me, we're in a similar camp to Portugal. In that we God. are reaching we are reaching the point where one, the manager's stifling a lot of the creativity in this team, and two, we have to have a conversation about our striker. Because the only thing at the moment that keeps Harry Kane the side is the fact he scored two goals. But is it worth that, considering how much he mm. hinders the tactical performance of the side? You look at the game against Switzerland, where I think we actually set up quite nicely in the 3-4-3. But the problem was, what we were seeing so often, was that our striker just stood there. Yeah. If you bring... I know a lot of people talk about Ivan Tony. For me, I wouldn't start him. and I get why people, because people say that, because he's very lively. For me, though, better for this tactic is to bring in Ollie Watkins yeah. to start that spot for England. But he's not going to. And so we're going to have to lump it with Kane. My big question mark is, can that work? Can England work with that? Uh, another, you know, if Shaw starts, what impact does that have? Could he play a huge role for England? Because I think we've lacked width on that left hand side. I definitely think they look better with the three four three, but the problem is looking better isn't good enough. Yeah, because I yes, think, they look better, but yeah. they're still so far off the levels of Spain and and even seeing um, Netherlands at this tournament at times. You, you look at the you look at the Switzerland game in the first half. Yeah, I know a lot of people have complained that it was boring, but it was solid. Yes, and it was boring. It was terribly dull and it wasn't enjoyable, but at least it was solid and it meant that we weren't 1 0 down, 2 0 down in the first half. Second half, I'll admit, was crap. We, I don't know what happened to England at half time. They went from looking really solid in the first half to just coming out in the second half and it was lazy. It was crap in that second I, half. I don't think anything happened to England. 
I think Switzerland changed quite clearly. And England didn't do anything about you it. You look at the first half, and it's actually very similar. 0.26 xG from five shots. The second half, we had one less shot and 0.21 xG. Mm. For Switzerland, they took just two shots in the first half and generated 0.08. In the second half, they generated six shots and, yeah. and, and 1.11 xG. So they clearly changed up to be a bit more aggressive and you look at the manner in which they got that goal for Briel and Bolo. It's really nice football down the right hand side. They then cut across the box, and England defenders make a catalogue of mistakes. And once again, we have to rely on a late bailout from from a player. But Kaya Saka showing his quality, phenomenal in, for England. And the issue for me now is I know a lot of people are speaking about Trent. But how could you possibly bench Bukayo Saka? Because, and Pitt will say, I'll play Saka at left wing back, but Shaw has to come back in. And that's the thing. I think, are, we, are we all right? So England, we're going on to team selection for England. Shaw, for me, has to come in over Trippier. Saka will hold his place at right wing back. Back three. Now, I think I know what the answer is going to be. And what is saying is my answer. The back three against Netherlands should be Konza, Stones, Gerhi. But let me... It, that's the thing. Gareth Southgate, let's be honest, he'll probably just be a straight swap, take Konza back out again. But look at that Switzerland yeah. game. Konza was really good. Carl Walker was absolutely shocking. Yeah, and I am convinced that Walker is paying off these ratings creators because how on earth football have given him a 7.6? I have no idea. He looked drunk. There was times where yeah. players were running at him and he was falling over backwards because he, he just couldn't, he couldn't keep up. For me, the, the big thing about Walker is his pace and at 34, that's diminishing. Mm. And he is just so poor in oh, possession so. now. I don't get what he adds. Yeah. And, and similar to Switzerland, yeah, somehow. Netherlands, he can out... He can out you know, Mark Gurry can outrun Val Vegos. We don't need Carl Walker's blistering pace to catch up to him. Unless Vegos is sprinting in behind. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah. To be honest, the back three for me should be Konza, Stones, Gurry, 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 Stones, Konza. But it's probably going to be Gurry, Stones, Walker. Which is a shame because Frederick Konza, because I think he was given 90 minutes against Switzerland and he. 78. And 78 minutes and he looked really, really good. He was solid. He didn't make any mistakes and he looked sober, which is better than what we can say for Carl Walker. Rest of, I mean, we'll talk about Striper as well. Gary Neville was spot on of what he said on ITV was that Kane could have scored two goals, five goals, or no goals. Southgate would still start him every single game, give him 90 minutes every single game. And. I, I don't like it really frustrates me I get he's our captain but he's not going to play well enough we will play better without him you've got and you've got other leaders on there I mean Carl Walker's the second one so don't give it to him find yeah. someone else Kane barely touched the ball the other question mark for me is in midfield because I think Kobe Mane has been really really good Solid. and I want to start with that because I don't want people to think I'm going in on him but you cannot deny the fact that in both games we've been 1-0 down when we've subbed him off and in both games when we've subbed on somebody else we've gone on to win that match we've gone on to score another goal now of course you can't put him at fault for the goals but yeah. clearly there is something tactical there for me dropping Bellingham in would be the smart option and then putting Cole Palmer in alongside Foden that's not going to happen I think mainly will likely start I'm just pointing out the facts there he has been subbed off and we have gone on to play better but I'm mm. not sure whether I, I don't know I, I don't know whether it's just because Bellingham's uh, better I'm... in that role when we're in attacking areas, I think the for me, is, but... that comes down. I, I think that might just be coincidence. Uh, yeah, I mean, could, definitely could be because, because could be. yeah, that's probably when Mane's come off. Not only have we bought off Mane, but we've also chucked. We've also bought off. Yeah, we've chucked on Palmer and we've chucked on Eze. And, and, and and that's, that's the thing. It's it's a hard one. I think Foden will be. I mean, he'll probably start again, but he'll be very lucky. Um, again, he was another. better against Switzerland, much better against Switzerland. Was, I think in the, the middle, biggest issue yeah. with his game was that he had no one to link off of. And it, it's no surprise Kane racked up the lowest rating of anyone on the England squad by quite yeah. a distance. He had the lowest touches of any player that played 90 minutes in the game. I just, any other player, of thing, course, I don't think the summer was getting in his touches. Yeah, but. The final one, Jordan Pickford. Um, we know he's not good with the ball at his feet, but we can also adapt to that by not passing to him. Mate, that corner. On about, was it 60 minutes where we had oh the corner? It might not have been 60 minutes, it might have been earlier in the game. We had the corner and we try and work it round and they press us and we, and we end up after 20 seconds after a corner, it's back with Pickford. I yeah. was stunned. But, but just on Pickford, so we can adapt to his lack of ability with the ball at his feet. He's a, he's a, very, he's a good shot stopper on his day and it, him saving that penalty proved why he starts for England. He has done that time and time again. Not only can he save penalties, he can also take them, but that was a huge save. 
to start a shootout by saving one of their penalties, yeah. set the tone. That's why we won that shootout. That's why we have Pickford. So for all those people that say Pickford's not good enough with the ball at his feet, Pickford shouldn't start, all of this, that is why he starts. And yeah, I agree he's not good with the ball at his feet, but just don't give it to him. Stop going backwards then. That will stop us going backwards if we, if we realise that. But he has to stay because that is what he does in those big moments. He comes up big for England. Yeah, definitely. I think he's... the, the Obviously, the shouts to say he's England's best ever goalkeeper are ridiculous. No, in terms God, of talent. No. God, no. But the impact he's had... He has put in some of the best performances of any England goalkeeper. Yes, yeah. so he definitely deserves his plaudits in that regard. I I get he you know ruins us tactically because we can't play out from the back really because he can't do that. Um, he's got the most long clear long, yeah. long pass of the tournament, also, which is so great. It's because it, he can't pass it. I short. think we'd look better passing in the back if, if Walker got his feet pointing in the right, the right direction <laughs> because it doesn't help. Yeah. Gerhard Stones will go. He's stumbled years down younger. Again. Yeah, that would help and slightly sober. I, I, but um, I do think bringing in Shaw. And playing the same, actually, but the, and the big thing also, you said in that Switzerland game how it changed at half time when Switzerland made changes. My worry is, I think first half could be very similar based on what we've seen at the tournament. It could be nil nil, decent half for both sides, and then we could see Coman make that substitution, make that personnel or tactical change that just means they get one over England, and that is my worry. However, yeah. um, I think South. I think having Shaw back in, going to the three ball three, I'm going to back England. I always have blind optimism towards yeah. England. I have absolutely no evidence, stats, facts, nothing to suggest that England are going to win this game because I still don't think Southgate's got it right this tournament. Yet I'll always have blind faith. I think I we've think got, we'll see much we've better. Got, England, like, we've got the quality in that squad that they get the job done. And we've seen that throughout this tournament where actually we have been tactically absolutely abysmal, but We've got the players that can step up in the big moments and win and win this tournament. I think we weren't good against Switzerland, but we got the job done. And realistically, you can win a tournament by getting the job done. So scraping. I mean, I think you're a you're a 2020 semi final. We scraped for against Denmark. Kane even missed the penalty in extra time. Luckily, it fell right back to him to score the rebound. Yeah. So that would leave us in your predictions a Spain England final with mine yeah. a France England oh. final. Either either way, very exciting game coming up on the 14th of yeah. July. As always, I hope you have enjoyed today's video and get involved in the comments down below. We're live for both of the same finals on Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll be live 15 minutes before kickoff, so join us there. I'm very excited, as always, yeah. for this year. So we've covered every game so far. It's been absolutely incredible. So thanks, guys, for tuning in. For anyone, if you've watched even five minutes of our streams, we really appreciate it. But yeah, we'll be back tomorrow night for the semi-finals. Yes. Anyway, thank you guys so, so much for watching today, and we will see you tomorrow. See ya.